Okay, so I'm going to wing it today. I don't really know what my painting is going to turn out like, and that's all right. But I am going, my idea uh, is to do a half barrel of sunflowers on a shiplap background. Okay, so if you're still here and not running away from me right now from saying that, I applaud you. But that's what we're going to do today. We are going to paint a farmhouse painting. So the colors that you'll need, brown, white, black, raw sienna. This is um, yellow, orange, yellow, and green. We might add a few other colors in, but that's what I have for now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my big brush like we've been doing. If this is your first week joining us, I really recommend going back to some of the previous paintings where you can get some more techniques. Um, I use usually um, a, a one inch flat, a half inch flat, and sometimes a three quarter inch flat, and then a six round brush. Um, and the paints that I use are actually from, uh, I want to say, where are they from? I want to say they're from Dick Blick. Um, also a couple things to remember, you'll need a jar of water. And you don't have to use one of these for paint. You can use a paper plate, uh, whatever you have that you can put paint on. It's acrylic. It washes out. Um, it doesn't come out of your clothes too well. So make sure that you, uh, if you get paint on your clothes, you cold water and soak right away to get it off. And if it's still there uh, tomorrow or the next day, you can soak it in cold water, vinegar, and Dawn. Um, tea tree oil actually helps as well. So, um, yeah, just remember to have fun with this. Don't take it too seriously. Remember to breathe and remember to get up and walk away every once in a while. You can pause it so uh, you don't have to stress about this. And the best thing about acrylic is if you don't like something, dry it and paint over it because you can. And you don't need to move on to a whole new canvas. You can just dry your painting, paint over it in white, start the whole painting over again. That's the beauty of it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush, give it a quick dunk in the water, dry it off on, um, I use just an old t-shirt, but you can use um, paper towels, whatever works for you. And we're gonna scoop up some white paint and we're just gonna go back and forth and we're not covering the whole canvas. We're just going back and forth with some white paint. And shiplap is not, completely white so we'll be adding some uh, minimal amounts of this raw sienna color so i'm just going to come in here brush that back and forth just for some depth you pat someone like this and then just go back and forth. This is where you'll start covering the whole canvas. So don't pick up more raw sienna, just pick up the, the white and spread it through. Make sure you're using all of the paint on your brush and you are going back and forth with nice long movements. You don't wanna take short movements like this you'll start lifting the paint up. You don't wanna sketch with the brush. If you have some spots that don't wanna turn into streaks or lines, just push into the canvas just a little bit more and you can get them to spread out. So that's just the basic start of our shiplap. And then what you do is I'm working on a landscape instead of portrait. If I was doing a portrait, it would be up and down, long ways, but I'm doing landscape. So you can do this whatever way you want. Just remember the ship is gonna go horizontal. If you were doing more of like a wooden sign background, it would probably be going vertical. But I am turning this vertical so I can put some 
some lines in there. So to do that, I'm just taking my brush and I'm not rinsing it. And I'm going to take a tiny, tiny bit of brown. And maybe a little bit of white. A tiny bit of brown, tiny bit of white. And I'm just going to very lightly make a line here. And that's one line. This is the uh, separation of each board of shiplap. They don't have to be perfectly straight. Just make sure you're not brushing. It's actually harder for me to do this because I'm normally standing at an easel. So I just have some lines there. And that's creating my shiplap. Now, they're a little bit wonky. I can clean them up, no big deal. If I don't like something, I'll just brush it out. See how it got too dark there? Don't worry about it. More white. Just gonna go over that line a little bit. Maybe that one. Okay. And then I can go back into it and make it a little bit straighter if I want. But most of this is going to be covered, so I won't stress about it too much. And that's it. That's how you get the start of your shiplap background. You can put some different, you can brush in some darker tones on the sides. I'm just mixing white with a little bit of brown, pulling it in on the sides. That's how you get some different tones in there. But you don't want to do too much because it's white and that's what shiplap normally is. It's usually a white color. And a little bit up there. Sometimes it's a little gray. See, so yeah, I put a little up there. All right. So you have your basic shiplap background. Once you have it where you want it, you're going to pause this video and dry your background. Okay, now that your background's dry, we're going to draw on, I'm using chalk because it erases really well. The thing to know about chalk though is when you use it, and if you try to like this and rub it dry if you're trying to erase, then it will not it just smears everywhere so just make sure if you want to erase it what i like to do is take a little bit of um a damp brush and i just start lifting the chalk off and that will help you erase it um if it's hard to see on this background just use a colored like a you know like a pink a light colored chalk not blue or purple or anything like that a light color like yellow or um, pink something like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my barrel and to do that what you're going to do I'm, do I'm doing a half barrel so you see them all the time at Home Depot um, or Lowe's and you can plant herbs in them and things like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a barrel so I start if you remember the mason jar I'm going to start with a rectangle that's how you start making our shape and you can place it anywhere you want to place it <sighs> it's just a basic rectangle and then from that rectangle I don't want to come down too much I don't want to make the bottom too narrow because they're pretty wide at the top and the bottom it's just a subtle difference so I'm just going to come down slightly here and here okay are these two lines that come down and then I'm just gonna get my brush and you can always wait to erase those lines you don't have to take them out right then and there but I'm just getting rid of these outer chalk lines okay 
and you have a barrel it's pretty easy um and you don't you can put like so what i do is i come in here and i'll come down like that it's kind of hard to see looks like my lights off of it a little bit all right and then i'll come over here and i'll make another little panel like that and i'm giving them a little curved edges at the top because they're not perfectly straight so if you can see that they're little curved edges all right and then you'll just make a guide for the metal ring or hoop that goes around the barrel just like that all right so you don't need you don't need to necessarily draw the insides, but I'm just kind of giving you an idea before I paint it on what it looks like. So what I'll do is I'm going to take my um, three quarter inch flat brush and I'm going to take some brown and some black together on my brush and I'm going to paint in the direction of the way the wood would go. So come over here. Whoops, see that little mistake right there? It happens. I'm gonna cover that with a flower or something. There's always a way to fix things. So if things like that happen to you, you have to be very calm about it and just say, whoops, kind of like I did. It can get frustrating sometimes, but like I said, you can always paint over it. There's always a way to fix it. So that's pretty much the first wood piece on our barrel. See how I'm coming up and over and I'm rounding down. can always add more black in spots if it's too too light for you. You can add more brown if it's too too black. Um totally up to you. Okay, and then the last these aren't that big. I'm working on a pretty small canvas. These are just eleven by fourteen canvases. So if you're working on a, a bigger canvas you're gonna want to make it proportionate to that canvas. You're not going to want to, um, you're not going to want to make a tiny barrel. You just want to make sure that you're painting in the direction that the wood would go. mind all the noises in my house. I have boys and they are very bored right now. So if you hear them in the background, I apologize. Okay, so that's just the outline of my barrel right there. See that? pretty easy once it's broken down for you. And you can always paint the bottom right here, the bottom edge to match your barrel. That way, if you hang it on a wall and it's not framed, it's finished. I'm just going to and actually another way I can fix this little mistake I have here is I can just bring this out a little bit wider and it's gone look at that there is a way to fix painting problems I always tell people in my you know, in my live classes, 
you'll say, I don't like the way it looks. And I say, sit with it for two weeks. And if you don't like the way it looks, bring it back to me and we'll fix it. Most people don't bring it back to me because they figured out either how to fix it or they like it the way it is. So that is our barrel. We're going to wait to put the detail on it till it dries a little bit. So in the meantime, I'm going to show you how to make sunflower. Sunflowers are my favorite to draw. But you know what? I think I actually want to have you dry this. Like I said, I'm winging it this week. I didn't plan this painting out. So go ahead and dry this and uh, we'll come back and we'll do the sunflowers. Okay, so your barrel should be dry. And when you do sunflowers, you're going to have... I don't know if you remember this from previous weeks, but always have an odd number. So if you're just going to do one, that's fine. Don't do two, do three, or do five. So some flowers are big and they can be overwhelming. So I would say just start with maybe one or three. Okay. I'm going to do three. So uh, the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to do a big one. And you just start with a circle. I'm going to start with a circle because of my, the size of my canvas. The circle is about the size of a ping pong ball. And then I just take that and I split it up, okay, into an asterisk. Okay. These are just your guides. You don't need to do anything else. We are not drawing the rest of the petals on. We're just going to use it as a guide. So this is where I use my smaller round brush. And I'm gonna start with my darker yellows. And by darker yellows, I mean my, my raw sienna, my brown. Okay, because these are gonna be your back petals. Each of those lines that are in that asterisk, that's the center of your petal. So what you'll do is you'll take that center line and you'll come in And you'll make a shape of a petal like that. And for now, we're just going to do the outlines. Turn your canvas if you need to. Just the outlines. So I'm going from the base of the center line of one of them up to the top of the center line of of this petal down to the base of the center line or the base of uh, not the center line yeah the center line it should be at the center line so it should come down to there sorry if that's confusing to you um, so I should actually make that a little bit bigger so I would come down to this center line and this center line And these are just the outlines. So I'm going from this center line. See that? Center line to center line. And these are just the back petals, like I said. So don't don't worry too much about you know how they turn out. They're really just there for um depth. So what we'll do is we go back in after we're done these and we'll put in other petals. So that's the start of it. So go ahead and just fill them in. have to forgive me I'm really used to painting on an easel not sitting down so this is a little different for me I'm also used to standing in front of about 30 to 40 of you I don't know how many people view these. Um, 
One thing I do want to say, though, is if you want to keep seeing these, you need to let me know. You need to let me know that you're doing them. Um, because I take probably about four hours out of my Saturdays to create these. Um, not just the painting time, but the editing, uh, splicing it all together every time I go away to dry my part and um, uploading it to YouTube takes about a good two hours. So if you're still interested in seeing these, I need you to, number one, subscribe to my YouTube. And number two, you need to show me your paintings. I need to see that they're being done. Um, because like I said, I take a lot of time away from my family and other, um, other freelance projects I do because I do a lot. I'm not, I don't just do painting. I'm, oops, sorry. I'm a graphic designer. I'm a photographer. Uh, you know, any and all art, I do it. So and I have about, um, probably 10 or 15 projects going on right now, uh, graphic design wise. So I just need to know that people are actually finding these videos useful and doing them. Okay, so that's the first part of my sunflower. Now I'll rinse my brush. This one I'm going to give a quick dry right here. You don't need to dry it too much. It's just to just um, get it a little bit dry so we can put a lighter color on top. So now I'm going to take a yellowy orange and I'm going to come in here between each of these petals. Don't worry if it doesn't cover right away. You can actually take some white with that. Again, don't worry if it doesn't cover right away because this we're actually going to go over with yellow. You'll see. So I will go here. I'm going in between each of those other petals. See how some of those colors blend in? I pulled some of that brown. It's okay. In between. See how I'm imagining that center line there? So I'm going from the center line of this, like the center of this petal, up to the center of this petal, okay? And I took a little bit of white on my brush, and I'm just pulling down with the flow of that flower, of that petal. Right now it looks like a pretty fall-looking sunflower. We are going to brighten this up, so don't be concerned about that. And 
And the thing about this too is when you do sunflowers, you're probably gonna need a few coats of paint because yellow is super transparent. That is why I picked a pretty light background, that shiplap, because it's pretty tough to cover. Like, see that there? I'm going to have to go over that a few times, but before I do, I want it to dry each time. If it doesn't dry, it's just going to lift the paint. I'm not worrying about absolute coverage right now. I'm just worrying about laying the sunflower down and getting it where I want it. dry for a few minutes I'll go back to it okay and this other one I'm gonna do over here I'm gonna have one over here I think and I'm gonna make an oval for the center of it this one is just I'm just giving you center line or the center circle I'm not gonna actually draw the sunflower because it's a little hard to do so I'm just gonna show you um if I remember how to do it. <laughs> That's the fun part. I don't know if I remember. Um, so this one I want to be more on its side. So I'm just going to kind of make like a smiley face, frowny face, confused face. And... I'm working along that edge of that oval there. See how I'm just making these petals? Now I'm gonna, those are just three of them. Then I'm gonna grab some regular yellow and come in here. This one's kind of hanging. This is a hanging sunflower. Just making some petals. He's kind of wilted, okay? And I'm just mixing the two yellows together for this. I'm using my orange yellow and, <clears throat> uh, and that regular yellow, sorry. Like I said, kind of doing this one blindly. So he's kind of just hanging there. So let's see like right here. This is, you're only seeing the side of it, right? So right here is like the back of it where the stem would come in, okay? So it's kind of hanging down. And then we'll do one more. And then we'll go in and put detail in. Right now we'll go and do one more. So think about what you did when we drew it the first time because we're not drawing it this time. We're going to do it a little bit different. I want to show you different ways to do things. So this time I'm just going to use my little brush and I'm going to start with my orange and I'm just going to give myself a center dot like that. Okay. And then I'm just going to work my way around. We'll fill in the middle, don't worry. I'm showing you all the different ways that this can be done. Hold on. So 
because this is the more um, free way to do it. It's more like, okay, I can do it this way and, um, you know, if I'm not so, if I'm not such a type A person, type A persons are going to, people are going to want to do it like this. But the more free people are going to want to do it like this. So right now I'm just going to take my orangey yellow and, you know, not some this technique might not work for people who are more um, abstract thinkers um if you can tell I'm not as much of an abstract thinker I think more like this I think um, I'm more mathematical and that's that's the graphic designer in me so um this way is a little bit harder for me to do So this is just my first set of petals and then I'm going to go over and do another set and I'm going to do them with some uh, bright yellow. I have every type of person that comes to my class so I'm always having to come up with ways for um, certain people to do things so whatever way works for you you can always take a piece of paper first and kind of work it out before you paint it so now i'm going in between and i'm just giving some brighter petals to it Again, see it's not going to cover right there. I'm going to have to go over it a few times. It's all right. Sometimes I just let them sit for a day and then I'll go back over them. tell I'm not an abstract thinker. I need, um, I need points. It's the way I draw. I can draw freehand, but I think of everything in shapes, so it's a little harder for me. I'm also going to take some yellow and I'm going to go in here. And I'm covering these brown areas with that bright yellow and the reason I'm doing that is because it gives it more depth it gives my sunflower more depth and it's okay in this case if they're not completely covered you see because it adds shadow I'm sorry if you hear my child playing Fortnite, which he's not supposed to be playing, but somehow is getting away with it because I can't yell at him while I'm doing this. Little sneak. Good thing is, is he doesn't care about art, so he'll never see me saying or hear me say that about him, <laughs> because he'll never watch my videos. Both of my kids don't like art. I don't know where I went wrong. So you see how we've brightened that up a little bit, but we've also given it depth and shadow in there. So then what we do is we'll come in here 
we need to add some some green and some some centers to these so what i do for the centers first is i just take some of that brown and that black and that white and i take this brush and i just tap in the center you have to think about sunflower centers they are not um solid they're all the seeds in the center so it's it doesn't it has a lot of texture to it okay uh so i'm gonna make this one i just work my way around just like that and then with this one i'm just gonna kind of lightly just dab in some because we have it hanging okay now I need some stems. Now you can do this in any order you want. Sometimes people like to place their stems first. The reason I don't is because the yellow is so hard to cover that it's hard to cover those stems. So what I'll do is I'll just come in here and I'm just gonna bring the stem in. This way, it's going to come in front. This stem is going to come in front of this other one. So that. And if your green's not covering, just add some white to it. The white helps add highlight, but also helps it cover. So you see how that one's hanging there? And then this guy here, his stem is going to be, I don't know, maybe I won't give him a stem because it's behind here. Who knows? Maybe I'll just put a little guy behind him. That's his stem. See that? I can also give this guy a leaf and it can go in front and down here. So it can go in front of that other sunflower. It doesn't have to be, you know, all around that. You just go over it. And then maybe I want to just have a leaf hanging off of this guy here. To make my leaves curl. So to do that I just come down and I make a little curly cue and I make this in here darker because it's curling over and then this in here lighter You can also take a tiny, tiny bit of black and come in here because that's curled over. I'm going to give it a little bit of shadow. See? And then just the, just some little detail things. So this is where I just take some, some white. Actually, I need a little bit more white. Okay. This is where I just take white and I put some highlights in here. So you see how I'm just kind of coming in here and giving highlights to the. And we'll do shadow too. So there's some. Some highlights. And 
and I'm not thinking too much about it. I'm just kind of putting them in. Same with this. So take some browns. And it got a little bit too dark. So what I'll do is I'll just take some of my raw sienna. Maybe a little white. You can always fix things if they get too out of hand. So see how that one got really dark? I used the wrong brown. I didn't mean to do that. So if this doesn't work, I'll probably just dry it and come back to it, but that seems okay. Just gave it a little bit more dimension. But I really meant to use my raw sienna. Come back in with some browns. So just some different dimension for you there. I might even go back and repaint that one. Who knows? It's however your sunflowers kind of turned out. But I'm just using white for the um, highlights and for the shadow, I'm using the raw sienna. And you don't have to blend it so it's all, you know, smooth. Some flowers aren't smooth. I'm just brushing in some, I like to call noise. Okay, so there's a lot of different ways you can do sunflowers. Mine turn out different every time I do them. Um, also for the uh, detail in the barrel, I'm just going to take some white and I actually think I'm going to take my smaller flat brush. I'm going to take my smallest flat brush, which is... Like this is, I don't even know what this is, but it's like a trim edge brush, but I use it for a lot of things. And I'm going to take some brown and some white. And I'm just going to come across here. One line, I can go back in and fill it in more solid after I get the line. Just, you want to get that first baseline in, and then, see, I can go back and fill it in. So we've got a little ring around our barrel, and then I'm taking those same colors, and right where I have those little curves of wood, very lightly. This one I have to imagine because I covered my curve. Okay, and there you have your barrel. You can even put another little ring on there if you have, if it's, you know, a little blank. Like say I wanted to put another one here. At the bottom. That is your sunflower in a barrel.
on shiplap, your little farmhouse painting. So um, go ahead and um, give it a whirl, show me your pictures, post it, um, whatever you want. Just let me know that you're still doing them and I will keep recording them. Thanks everybody.